No, trust the, me. The pearl salt is real, bro. I honestly. got a piece of it because she came on my show when I had 400 subs. It was crazy. Uh, but oh, it's like, dude, pearl. fuck all y'all, man. It makes me so mad. Pearl's, pearl's good, bro. Pearl's, pearl's good. Nobody's perfect. We all make our mistakes, whatever, whatever. But she's good. She's been good to me. She's a good girl. Um, and, and you can, hey, you can hate all you want. You, but you better hate on that million fucking subscriber count on YouTube, too. Yeah. She had 500K <laughs> when she came on my show like four or five, four months ago. Yeah. Crazy. She had 60K in May. Yeah, what the fuck? She's she'd she did well. She's she real smart. Me. Um, but like, yeah, I, I got my come up with uh, starting with Rolo and Rich and Donovan and then Ryan Stone, and then the crazy dude from Twenty One Conventions, the Anthony Johnson, the, the psycho dude. He he he's crazy. He's crazy. I see. I'm I'm still learning about everything. I got I jumped in way too late on YouTube. Don't even worry about that guy. <laughs> he's so irrelevant. He is a fucking loser. But anyways, the thing is, a lot of these dudes, Rich, Rolo, Don. Ryan, these guys are all in their 40s, 50s. They've been out the game for a while, right? Rich Cooper's never been like a real thug. He's never been real pill, red pill. He's just kind of like a fucking, like he's just like a, a, a rip off a duplicate kind of guy. Like, yeah. Parroting his shit. But a lot of these guys, they never really lived that life. And so yeah. they were trying to like put it into words. And I was just like, I learned over the years because I started saying Money Muscles Game, and then everybody started saying it. And then somebody bought MoneyMusclesGame.com. Motherfucker. Son of a bitch, right? I know. <laughs> that is so fucked up. So then 2021, though, I went through a, a, a very big personal change in my life. And I learned through my, my good dude, uh, King Dre, and. Um, uh, a couple other people, Paul from Apex Mindset. Paul's a great guy. You got to get him out here if you can. And um, a couple of guys from my inner game, uh, Ryan Fowler from innermasculine.com. And these dudes had taught me that I had bad frame. And so I started studying frame and I started understanding frame. And then I started realizing that is the most important component of masculinity. I so agree with you more it's, than it's, anything. You know what I'm saying, bro? More than anything. And guess what? I, that's one of the things I was going to bring up at a certain point. <laughs> Is how big of a deal frame is. Thank Dude, you for saying that. It's true. It's true. So Listen, I tell you, I'm five, seven years ahead of the red pill in the manosphere. Everybody's going to be talking about man, my, a frame and inner game soon. So You're I, so right. I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. And so I, I started talking about fucking uh, frame, and now like everybody's writing books about frame. And so it's, I, I, I jokingly say I'm the real godfather of the you, manosphere. You know, you know it. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the thing about frame is Money Muscles Game Frame, it's just like – it is everything that a guy must do to maintain an above average life, to get above average women, to have an above average ex experience. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm a little, I'm a little like obsessed with death. Not like in that way, but like I think about my death every way and every day. Especially, you start to think about it because what's the two things men chase the entire life? Pussy and money. Pussy and money, right? Yeah. And what happens when you get a fucking shitload of money and a shitload of pussy? You know what? You have like a. You fuck, start doing stupid shit. You have like an existential <laughs> crisis. You have like, or at least for me, I was just like, "Fuck, I'm rich and I got all these hoes. I'm still gonna die." And I was just like, just fucking. I was like depressed for like four months. That's like, crazy. Because I had, I you know, I put, I, I, I had pedestalized you making millions. The peak, yeah. I make millions and did fucking all these super hot girls. I went like in 2021. I went. I'm not trying to show off. I'm just keeping it a thousand. I went on four vacations and four different resorts with four different girls in that summer. And that shit was just awesome. It There's was nothing better. Oh my God, bro. I was fucking, I was out of control, <laughs> but it was awesome. Mm -hmm. But then after that, the, like the, the existential crisis, the come down, yeah, you, the come down. Yeah, it always, yeah. That life is a roller coaster. Dude, yeah. You, you hit that high and then, Nobody tells you about the come down because you got to mm -hmm. fucking keep that dopamine coming. Yep. Or you're going to frazzle out. And, you know, and then, and if you're not strong in your heart, as strong as you think you are spiritually, yeah, yeah, in your inner game, your frame, you'll crack. And that's what happened to me. I did crack. And I thought, and bro, I thought, I was like, I am unstoppable. I'm the fucking man. I'm 35. This was 2021. I was, I was 35. I made fucking $2 million in fucking two years. I got fuck all sub count on YouTube. Nobody knows who the fuck I am. I was just like, fuck everybody, you know? Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> you know, pride comes before the fall. And um, then I was humbled. But the thing is, when I was humbled, I also would realize I had a massive hole in my game, which is my frame. Yeah. 
and I went through a whole year and a half. Up to this day, I'm still working on my frame. That's my biggest thing. Dude, I, I would agree that I think that that's something that every man is always going to work. As somebody that's in a serious relationship for two years, and I've always I've had five serious relationships where I've lived with every girl. Mm-hmm. Frame is something that every man is always going to work on. You're always going to fail shit test at least once. You're always going to. No man is perfectly unemotional at all times, unless I think he's gay. Honestly, mm-hmm. I, I don't think that there's. A, and, and the only reason why he's not emotional with that woman is because he truly doesn't have feelings for her. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No. It, it's. And that. And that ties into the real solution to the whole red pill problem we have. It's not about teaching dudes to fuck a bunch of girls. It's about teaching the dude to get a de- like eventually get a good woman and then move on with your life and know how to keep her there without yes. scaring her away or being stupid in some way. Yeah, yeah. and making. I sure- think they mess it up all the time. Like they fuck it up all. Like I always tell guys, I bet y'all failed a shit test, and that's why your last relationship failed. Yeah, like or or she was hyper- hypergamous because you were a broke ass loser. You know. Yeah, <laughs> and then also like the vetting process of choosing a chick is really important too. Very true. Yeah. You know, because like, I think of like a lot of chicks, what they do, I would say the biggest problem the dudes have in America is the thirst. And then the biggest problem the girls have in America is just, it's just fucking sad, but it's like being hoes. Like yeah, the average girls, and then being hoe. titled after being a hoe being like, Oh, I'm a hoe, but I still deserve all this bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, bro. Like no. the streets call, man, the streets call. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, no good. Th- those are the problems. The thirst and the hoeing. Yeah. I want to know, uh, what's the deal with Rolo's friend that you hate so much? I watched y'all's little New Year's thing. What's his name? Aaron Clary or what's his name? Oh, no. Aaron. No, dude. It's, it's, it's a gig. <laughs> it's just funny. It's so it's, funny, it's bro. It's a gig. No, it's a it gig. It makes me laugh every time, though. <laughs> no, me and, actually, me and Aaron Clary, I'm going to fly. So on Sunday, I'm flying to Cali to do whatever podcast. And then after that, I'm flying to Las Vegas to link up with Aaron Clary and Rolo. That's dope. So I'm going to be going on Rolo's show. Maybe I can get Aaron Clary to pull out his fucking Nokia phone and do a live stream. <laughs> Shit. I always wanted you to roast him at least one time on the show. Yeah. No, Aaron's, Aaron's no, Aaron's real cool though. It makes me laugh because you do it so often. Every time I'm just like, I don't know who this guy is, but it's fucking hilarious. Every well, time because, him. because Aaron used to pick on this, like little, this dude named TJ Martinelli. And I had to know the background. This is, yeah. how, this is why. And so he's always bullying TJ. TJ's like a nice guy. He's like a super nice guy. I'm like, why isn't anybody bullying Aaron? And then one day I was just like, you know what, Aaron, shut the fuck up. Yeah. So no, Aaron's picking me up at the airport in Las Vegas. Well, or Aaron will like me. He'll like me. Uh, um, I want to know where do you see Red Pill going in the next decade? In ten years, where do you see Red Pill at? Oh boy. Well, okay. Everything is tied to inner game. Everything. Your body weight. Your money. The quality of women. The quality of relationships. Right. All of this shit is. Can you gonna... explain inner game really quick, just so people understand that? A- absolutely. So. Inner game is your self-esteem as a man and the relationship you have with yourself, how you talk to yourself, how you treat yourself, how you take care of yourself, how you spend money on yourself. A lot of you dudes, a lot of people, my my speciality is men because I'm a men's coach, (laughs) right? Okay. There's no bitches watching this thing. Yeah, they're right. It's not. It's ninety percent men, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm. I'm. I'm using logic and facts. You know. So of course it's men. Um. But yeah, you know the 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 frame thing. The, the inner game is is the most important component. And a lot of dudes they have like, look, uh, this is new to our time, but in America, the majority of these households households are single mother households, right? Mm-hmm. And it is quantifiable. Whether ask two dudes from the streets or studies, single mother households are very chaotic. Yeah, more than a, a two family household, mm-hmm. right? So, what's happening is you're having these women because the women are the ones that are destroying relationships in America, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not trying to like be like women ain't shit, but just this is the truth. They're walking away. Women are quitting at an all time high rate. Yep, and in the process of doing that, destroying the family. Yep. Literally destroying the family, fucking up the guy mentally, fucking up the ch- children mentally, and then she gets fucked up the least. Mm-hmm. Out of all those people, children suffer the first, they f- suffer the most, then the men, and then the wife less, right? Unless it's some extreme situation where the dude's like whooping her ass, which every woman's like, well, he's probably abusing him. No, look at the fucking numbers. No, yeah. right? Um, <clears throat> these chicks are walking away, and I heard that. Over 50% of divorce papers and proceedings 
have the words Facebook and Instagram in them. Oh my goodness, that's so sad. 20 years ago, we would have never seen it. You know, when I, when I see a girl that's addicted to social media, I just I just look at her and I'm like, you're an idiot. Like, I look down at people like that. I'm like, do you have no self-control? Like, are you so fucked up in that? But the answer is yes, and it goes back to this. These mothers, when they divorce the fathers, this is traumatizing yeah. on the children, no matter what the age. I, I know I have a friend of mine that when the mother did the divorce, he went into a spiral of depression for for a while, long time, very bad. So shit happens to you. I'll use myself as an example. You know, I had an aunt that you ever see the water boy? Yeah. Yeah. Love that movie. Okay. So you know his mom, right? Yeah. So my aunt was like that, which was like <laughs> You're drinking out of a red cup. Red cups are the <laughs> devil. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. You know, and everything was the devil, dude. So listen, I was actually a good 